the first episode of the podcast series from AJ and BG Media. I'm representing a publisher called Odo's channel today, and today we have a an esteemed guest, uh, Anupama B, who is a lawyer, as well as uh, an author who's written a book on Posh. Anupama, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, and I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful conversation together. I'm sure it is going to be indeed. So let's uh, begin by asking uh, Anupama, tell us what really instigated the government to uh, create the Posh Act. Very relevant question, Ajish. Uh, in fact, this is something that most people ask me, especially considering the fact that the first direction towards coming up with a law on sexual harassment of women at workplace was given as early as in 1997 by the Supreme Court of India in Vishaka versus State of Rajasthan. And it took our government nearly 20 years to come up with a law and to ensure that there is something to protect women at workplace. Oh my God, it, it took 20 years uh, for the government to really come up with a bill and then followed by a Posh Act. But uh, let me try and understand this a little better. Uh, prevention of sexual harassment against women. Uh, while we are in a gender neutral world, uh, why not men? Is, are men also really covered under uh, the Posh Act? Ah. The standard question from men. Um, well, you know, we had uh, the Vishaka versus State of Rajasthan, which is the judgment, uh, the basis of which the new Posh Act has come out, or rather the Posh Act, which came out 10 years ago, was the basis of um, an Anganwadi worker being raped when she was on work. And that led to a group of NGOs getting together, calling themselves Vishaka, and they went to the court asking for protection of women at workplace from sexual harassment. Um, and the standard uh, reply that I always give men who ask me this question, why don't you put a public interest litigation as well for you to get the same relief? Uh, which naturally, uh, you know, uh, I would like to see how many would like to actually go to the court and approach them. Having said that, when the government actually came out with the bill, they did call out for uh, objections. A lot of men did write to say that, uh, you know, they would also like this to be a gender neutral policy. But the government, after due consideration, came to the conclusion that the law at present will only be for the woman. And the companies or the organizations are free to write about harassments that happen to men and at that point they would reconsider making this a gender neutral law so you really mean to say that uh, no man has gone ahead and filed a pil uh, on posh yet to the best of my knowledge no no one has gone to the court so far and uh, even when we've had inquiries uh, let me just i'm just adding this on my own uh, even when we've had inquiries where a case has been or a complaint has been made against a guy uh, most often they would like to step down without even going through an inquiry so no one's gone so far interesting uh, so uh, anupama let me ask you this question what what sort of really provoked you to write uh, this book and uh, how do you think it's going to benefit uh, the readers you know the main reason that um, made me write this book was the fact that this law is mostly misquoted you either have an, a chartered accountant or you know, advising an organization that they shouldn't actually be doing all this, you know, just put it on paper that there's an internal committee and then you carry out awareness, just pick up something on YouTube and say that you've done an awareness program. And at the same time, uh, there are organizations who believe that addressing a case of sexual harassment means that the man is already a culprit. In fact, I should give you an example of this institution I went to. Uh, I, my uncle told me that they are very particular in the institution to enforce uh, posh. So I met the uh, chairman and I said, you know, I'm very happy to hear that you're doing a lot for women. And his um, first statement was, yes, you know, I'm very particular. If a woman complains about a case of sexual harassment, the first thing that I do is ask him to leave the company. And I realized that there's a lot of misconceptions. The people, the 
employees working in a company don't seem to understand law. The organization doesn't have a clear picture. The government is not really enforcing it. So I thought if I come with a book, which is like a ready reckoner, right? If you open the book, you've got everything that you need on posh. So that motivated me to write it in a very simple language so that everyone, including employees and organizations, understand it well. So I think as per the uh, Bosch Act, uh, any organization, any workplace with more than 10 employees is supposed to have a committee, Bosch committee. Uh, what are the repercussions, you know, in case if an organization doesn't follow the norms, uh, what are the actions that government can actually take upon that organization to ensure that they follow the Bosch uh, norms uh, very diligently? Very relevant question, Ajisha. I'm really happy you asked this because um, most often people are under the belief that you need to have 10 women employees to actually have an internal committee. And I think it's a very relevant point that if a company has 10 employees, even if all 10 are men, need to have an internal committee. And the committee needs, of course, certain women also to be present. I'll get into the, I mean, you can find all the details um, in the act and uh, even in my book. But uh, the importance of having the internal committee is to ensure that the entire uh, inquiry happens within the four walls. And if an organization does not have an internal committee, as per the law, uh, there is a stipulation of a penalty of 50,000 rupees at the first instance and at the second instance, the trade license can also be revoked. So, uh, Anupama, quite very interesting. Uh, so, who is your target audience? Are they men or are they women? I, I believe the act uh, definitely protects the women. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of women to go ahead and pick up the book and read. Uh, but do you expect men also to read this uh, uh, book of yours? Of course, Ajish, this book is for everyone. As I said right in the beginning, the book is for a woman who is a victim, a man who is um, who has committed the act or who is innocent in this process to the organization where, or rather the organization in which uh, the incident has happened. It's a book for everybody. So if a person, uh, let's say he is the respondent, so the complaint has been made against him, whether it is a false complaint or uh, a genuine complaint, his rights and obligations are detailed in a very easy manner to understand in the book. So this book is for everybody. So what kind of readers responses have you received so far from both men and women? What are they talking about your book? Have they come to you personally and asked you a few questions in person? Uh, yes, um, you know, there have been a few women who have approached me and told me that the book has been very easy and supportive, especially when they went through inquiries and similarly even for the men and also not just the men and women who are involved in this, but also the organizations. I think the organizations, the inquiry committee, when they have the book in front of them, which actually gives them the entire inquiry at a glance. So a lot of people have given me very positive response that the book is simple easy to understand and I have tried my level best to make it non-legal and, uh, and I think the response has been good. Moving on to the next question, uh, as a lawyer, how many such posh cases are you really handling at the moment? Uh, at no point do I want to be proud enough to tell you that I'm handling multiple posh cases at workplaces um, and I hope a day doesn't come where the, it, my whole day goes only in handling these cases. Uh, right now, uh, I think we've concluded one just last month, but the intention, at least the intention with which I've written the book and the intention with which I've started um, Upseed Consulting Services Private Limited is with the intention to make workplaces more respectful. So I will be technically very happy the day I see that workplaces are respectful and we have very few cases where people are more vigilant about their rights. People are, you know, they know the, what they can and cannot do. And work organizations also treat this like any other misconduct that happens between employees. So, uh, are the government, uh, any government per se, no, no, no political parties I'm talking about, any government per se, or are the companies actually doing enough uh, to prevent these kind of sexual harassments at the workplace? 
Um, thanks, Ajish, for this question again. Something that I always uh, take up the opportunity to talk about it wherever I go, and that is, in 2013, we got the Posh Act, and we also got the Companies Act, and Companies Act has been enforced 200%, and I believe that the government has not enforced uh, Posh even to 5%. And the reason why I tell you that it's not even 5%, I know of several organizations. Yes, multinationals have uh, managed to ensure that they comply by law, but there are several other organizations. We don't comply only of multinationals. And there are several other organizations where people don't have an internal committee. If they have an internal committee, it's on paper. And even if there is an internal committee which is active, uh, the sessions, the awareness programs are not done and the internal committee has zero clue about how to handle an investigation. So if you ask me, no. And if you ask me if organizations are compliant with it, you know, we have thousands of companies and we are talking about private limited companies and then unregulated organizations. And I think we can actually proudly say or rather, um, be ashamed of the fact that not even 10% of these organized and unorganized sectors have fully implemented the act in spirit. So Anupama, as a responsible lawyer, uh, as a writer, as well as a good Samaritan, uh, what would be your message to the workplaces uh, across uh, our nation? As I said, if we, um, or rather if all workplaces and people working at workplaces can have a society, uh, office or an organization which is a respectful workplace. And I use the word respectful because I'm talking about respectful to the organization, respectful to all the genders. And I'm not talking about only women. Yes, women are in minority. We have to ensure that they are protected. But a, a respectful workplace is one in which everyone is respected. And I think that is something all organizations should achieve. Anupama, generally, uh, any law book is quite boring. You have to remember a lot of articles, a lot of sections, what is IPC, what is CRPC, what this particular act says. So when you say a ready reckoner on Posh, uh, how easy is your book? How is your book designed? Uh, how did you go about making it easier for a common employee to read and understand your book better? Um, you know, I have gone through several um, awareness programs, um, orientation sessions and one thing that I understood in all my sessions were I used to try and make it as interactive as possible because that kind of gave people the interest to listen to what I'm saying. And that made me want to write this book because I have not really put it as section number so and so. In fact, I've avoided doing that. Instead, I take up a scenario, try and explain that scenario in common, simple language, and then try to bring in the relevant provision of law as a thing to do or not to do. And that way, I've tried to make it um, easily understandable, as I said, to employees who are reading it and even to the internal committee members who are also technically employees to also understand uh, what they should be doing in the position they hold. because. An internal committee member actually gets the power of a civil court. So here is the last question for you, Anupama. Uh, do you plan to translate this book in other vernacular languages? One, it's clubbed into two. And we also get a hint that you are working on a fiction. So would you like to disclose what are you up to these days? And what could we expect from you as an author as your next book? Uh, yes, Ajesh, there have been certain requests for me to translate the book. Um, it's on the cards, but I've not yet uh, decided or taken a decision on that. And um, on your second question that uh, I might come out with a non-fiction. Yes, um, there have been a lot of stories that have, I have written, especially because my father has lived a very inspiring life. And some of his stories, um, some of the things he's told me, I've uh, managed to write it as a story. I do have it on my cards and I hope, uh, you know, once I'm away from my busy legal schedule, I'll be able to uh, give the final touches to this book as well. Thank you so much Anupama for being on our show. It was wonderful having you here. 
For all the viewers out there, uh, Anupama is a lawyer and she is also an author of Ready Reckoner on Posh at Workplaces. Please go ahead and pick up the book. And if you have any queries or if you want to get a legal counsel, please reach out, reach out to Anupama V. She runs her own legal firm called ABC Legal. Anupama, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Ajesh. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure being on this podcast. Very interesting questions, lovely conversations, and I am really grateful to Aruna as well from Authors Channel for um, getting us together. And I hope uh, we continue to speak and be in touch. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.